This week on r slash pro revenge. I have crippling depression. Stay till the end to find out what happens when thief tried to steal my car, accidentally filled it up with gas and brought it back to me instead. Height approved. <laughs> this isn't my story, but my parents. It was probably the first time I witnessed malicious compliance and I still remember it well. It was about 25 years ago, so I was about 8, and we had just moved into a 150-year-old house that was in need of major repairs. My dad, thinking ahead, knew he would need a large garage, workshop to really get started on the renovations properly. On the edge of our yard was an ancient barn that was falling apart and needed to be torn down. My dad figured this was the best place to build his new workshop, so that was the plan. We had met and were on good terms with all the neighbors at that point. When the plans for the new workshop were finished, my parents went around to all the neighbors as a courtesy to show them the plans and get their blessings. The neighbors whose property the current barn and new workshop would border, I'll call them the Peters, were concerned about the height. The existing barn was 16 feet high and they asked if we could only build it one story, 12 feet max, as to not block the sun in their yard. Sure, no problem my parents agreed, they wanted to go two stories for extra storage, but just one wasn't a deal breaker. So the old barn was torn down and the foundation laid for the new one. During that time, there was a falling out with the Peters and my parents. I'm not sure what happened, but it turned nasty. One day, my brother and I were playing street hockey and Mr. Peters came out yelling at us get off the road you half-breed shits. My dad is black, so we're both half black, you have to earn your place in this town. Upon hearing this, my mum had to physically restrain my dad from going over and beating the living shit out of him. Eventually, he cooled off, and started on his plan. The plans for one story went out the window, soon, the new garage that was only supposed to be one story soon gained a second in the blueprints. If they were going to direct racist comments at his kids, my dad would build what he wanted. As construction started, the Peters came over to ask why there was two stories being built and were told to go for it themselves. We didn't hear from them again until the roof started to go on. The bylaws of the township limited all art structures to 24 feet high. The Peters called the township and then a building inspector, claiming that the new garage was over 24 feet high. If it was over height, the entire thing would have to be torn down and rebuilt, costing us tens of thousands of dollars. I remember the Peters standing there, watching the inspector, with smug looks on their faces. Two days later, we got the final report back from the township and inspector. 23 feet, 11 inches, just as my dad had drawn up in his new plans. He sent me up on the roof of the garage, just plywood, no singles yet, with some spray paint and had me write 23 feet 11 inches, height approved in 2 foot high neon orange letters across the entire roof, facing their yard and house. Not only did the garage block all sunlight from reaching their yard, but my dad waited until everything else was done before he shingled its side of the roof. They had to stare at those neon orange letters for almost three years. We didn't hear a peep from them for the next 10 year until they moved. My manager was an awful person to me, but I got her fired in an embarrassing fashion. You are fake news. Years ago, shortly after I graduated high school I got a new job to support myself during college. The new gig was in pet store and I was working in the department that sold the fish, aquariums, reptiles and birds, etc, etc. The store manager was an awesome guy who I will call Kurt. Kurt was an old school guy, he went to work, worked hard and went home. That's all he expected out of you as well. My immediate manager over my department was this large snaggletooth witch of a woman I'll call her Stephanie. We got off to a bad start, 
because she quickly found out that I knew more about reptiles than her, she preferred the fish, whereas I had kept snakes for the past 4-5 years. Her ego couldn't handle a fresh employee not needing her guidance. From then on she was terrible to me, she singled me out to clean the goldfish tanks, and have the other employees cover sales every day I worked. She would say rude things to me such as you are the weak link in my team, you are the reason I'm having problems in this department. Fast forward about a year, my hours had been cut by about 25%, I asked the store manager what the deal was and he told me that our department had lost too much money between lack of sales and broken merchandise etc. This puzzled me, but I didn't think much of it, because everybody's hours were cut. Simultaneously myself and a few co-workers had noticed something strange. Stephanie had recently taken much more interest in the customers. She insisted on helping certain customers and sending us to do busy work while they were there. A customer came in one evening and was talking to us about how nice Stephanie is, turns out Stephanie was breeding mice and selling them to customers outside of the store, we found out she was breeding all of her animals, her dogs, turtles, mice, and selling them to customers she met through our store. Not only was this taking business from us, our store had a couple corporate policies we did not feed nor sell mice as live food for snakes, and we donated a lot of time and money to shelters and we condemned breeding dogs and cats for sales. Stephanie was making money by selling animals to the customers all the while her department had hours cut for all of its employees. It didn't quite make sense, how this was costing us so much money until one evening I thought I had figured it out. Stephanie was an otherwise lazy woman, but when one of her customers came in she was by their side the whole time. I watched closely as she followed a customer around helping them pick out a cart full of expensive aquarium decorations and terrarium supplies like lights and bulbs. I followed and wrote down every item she grabbed. I wanted to see where this went. She directed the customer to a register and went to check them out, she's lazy, and would never do this for any other customers. I noted the time and went back to work. I later spoke to other cashiers about Stephanie checking customers out and they said that she only ever rang up certain customers and she acted weird when they did it. They suspected she was abusing coupon for them or applying hefty discounts. I got my co-workers to corroborate my story about the under the table animal sales and suspicious behavior and I went to talk to Kurt. I handed him a paper with about 20 ups and the time written on it and I said I think if you look up a transaction from registered to at this time last night you will find a large discount applied to it. These are the items I would expect you to find on that transaction. He was a bit puzzled and I explained everything to him. I told him I didn't want to make any accusations before, because I wasn't sure, but after seeing her in action I was pretty sure something was going on. He thanked me and assured me he would look into it. A couple weeks later I was at work and I noticed Kurt was standing near the door watching closely. It just so happened Stephanie was coming in for her shift right about that time. The second she walked through the door he called her over to his office. Apparently waiting in his office was a regional manager from corporate. He looked at the list I gave him and looked up transaction from the night before. He found one at the exact time I wrote, but it only had about half of the items I listed, but every item that was on the receipt was on the list I gave him. This prompted him to watch her for a few weeks and in that time frame they found her to be taking her customers around shopping, personally taking them up to the register and scanning every other item and putting the expensive stuff into the cart without ringing it up. In that time span she had given away over $1,500 in merchandise and he looked back at the logs we keep for broken merchandise that is written off and found an excessive amount of aquarium supplies and decorations that were signed off by her. It was something like 1000% more written off broken merchandise than was found at the same time last quarter. All in all she was charged with stealing, defrauding the store in over $3,500 in merchandise, and it just so happened that Kurt had already arranged for police to meet them after firing her to escort her out. I don't know if she went to jail, but I did watch her get walked out by police with about 20 employees staring. I wish I could have said something, but I had to settle for her making eye contact with me as she walked out, to which I gave her a quick wink. Be gone!
thief tried to steal my car, accidentally filled it up with gas and brought it back to me instead. Shots fired! Shots fired! My first car was a 1984 Jeep CJ7, a pretty sweet ride for an earth pool teenager in the 90s. I was working midnights at a gas station and loaned it to my brother who was taking a date to a party. I got a call around 1 a.m. from my brother who told me he left the keys in the jeep and it was stolen. I was devastated. I was still on the phone with my brother when the thieves pulled my jeep into my gas station to fill up on gas. As luck would have it, the gas gauge on my jeep was broken and always breathed empty, and I worked at the only 24-hour gas stations in the area. I pressed the silent alarm and proceeded to fill up my jeep. It was a full-serve station. When the thieves were out of the jeep, I saw an opportunity to slip the key out of this ignition and into my pocket. They paid for the gas, and argued amongst each other who had the keys last. The delay was enough for the police to arrive. I had to explain the story to the officer half a dozen times before he understood. The thieves had this stunned look of disbelief on their faces I'll never forget. The cops were belly laughing telling the story to dispatch, all the while the thieves sat in cuffs in the back of the squad car. The story made most of the major newspapers the following day. Be gone!